Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by former King of the Cage welterweight champion, Anthony Lapsley. Anthony, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. Anthony, let's go back to the beginning. How did you get started in mixed martial arts? Oh, man. Little, little story. For sure, uh, I ended up meeting a guy named Cobra Rhodes, who's his world champion arm wrestler. Mm-hmm. Uh, I met a bar, actually, and then uh, we exchanged our information, and basically, he knew some people in the organization, uh, and the fighting, and asked me for something I wanted to do, and, uh, of course, literally, uh, two weeks after meeting him, I, I picked up my phone to call him, and he was calling me at the same time, so I guess it was God's will and God's time, and, you know, here we are now. Mm-hmm. Before you started training MMA, did you know anything about the sport, or when you started training, that was your first exposure to it? Well, basically, I've seen it on TV, but I was, you know, I wrestled in high school, and I was pretty good in wrestling, so uh, it's something I always seen, you know, I always thought I could do, but uh, basically, just when I had the right opportunity, I just just took it and went with it. Mm -hmm. When you started training, was the plan always... To just get into fighting, or was it just to try it out and if you liked it, stick with it? Oh, I always wanted to fight, man. I wanted to make, you know, make some money, make some living for my family. Everyone knows I'm a gang of kids. So, in order to take care of those kids, you know, I have to make some kind of, some kind of ends meet. So, uh, yeah, I got into it just for the money, man, to make some change and, you know, some more to do, fight, and, you know, those kind of molly model deals. So, mm-hmm. just with it. Mm-hmm. Did you have any amateur fights, or were you pro right off the bat? Um, I fought two amateur fights, lost them both, and then uh, that's when I really got into my training because those, those two fights were just basically try it out, trial fighting, see, see how I liked it and stuff like that. But um, I lost them both, and then I started, I got into my jiu-jitsu and you know, a little bit of boxing and stuff like that, and shit, I went with it, man. Mm-hmm. You started off your pro career 7-0. and uh, you started off real fast. Your first career loss was against Carlo Prater back in March of 2007. What did you learn from that fight, and what are some of your memories of that fight? Uh, well, that fight, um, basically, I felt, and as other people told me, well, I actually watched the fight that I, I think I won the fight. Um, so what I learned from that is to never leave it up in the hands of the judges again. So um, my my training and everything else after that was to finish finish fights and not leave them in their hands because, you know, they can see it one way or it could be, you know, going for the hometown or, you know, these politics go sometimes. So, mm-hmm. basically, I just went ahead and decided, decided to, you know, learn my submission and I think I submit, submitted quite a few people so, so far. So. Mm-hmm. Does the submission game, does that come natural to you the most or is it something that, that you've really had to work with because a majority of your wins are by submission? Well, um, the is from wrestling Jiu-Jitsu is, you know, it's, it's kind of, it, 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 it kind of go together. It's just, you know, um, it's, it's really good to have a good wrestling base, you know, and then you know, you know, the base submissions, you can get out. I, I always learn to defend things first, not to defend them, and then you're not going to do them. So I defend it, I should be able to do it. So, you know, it, it basically, it, it, it came in a foot to me. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad to transition from both. Mm-hmm. And then after that Prater fight, you went 6-2 and two with one no contest, and then you earned a shot at the King of the Cage Walter White title. Uh, that fight against Aaron Weatherspoon is known for the fight ending with a double KO. Walk me through everything leading up to the double KO, and talk me through the actual double KO. Well, in that fight, we know that it was, a, it was a pretty much a big high fight. You know, Slam was, was he, had, he was uh, he was dominating in King of the Cage, and uh, you know, when I got my shot at him, you know, you know, I just said, hey, I'm going to go forward, and, you know, it's my chance, and my time to shine, and, you know, that one, you know, as, as the fight went on, you know, it was, it was pretty evenly, evenly matched, and, uh, the double KO to the beginning of the second round, and I threw a kick and a series of a punch, and I connected with a punch, and people see it differently, or see it other ways, but, like, you know, he kind of ended up bumping heads, and he was out cold, and I kind of was on the ground, and then when he got there, I get a lot of shit from kicking my legs and, you know, kind of, it would be so fast I said, want him to come hit me. And he wanted, I, I, I had no, no idea or no clue how I got on the ground. So I just basically catched me with a 2 be fixed mode. And I didn't want him to come over and down the county, you know, while I was down in kind of days. So we were, and I seen him, I looked over my easy legs flat out, not moving. So I get up and I think I won. I hope, you know, you know, the like first man up or whatever, but, you know, her being said, you know, no conscious, so it was cool. 
Mm-hmm. I got another shot and I beat him the second time. Mm-hmm. It looked like in that fight that you knocked him out with a punch and then he put you down with the headbutt. Is, is that how you saw it? Before your rematch with Aaron Witherspoon, your dad actually predicted that you would win the title in a minute 30. What SureDog has down for you is you won the title in a minute 34, but I've heard you say that it was a minute 19 is when you actually won it. But talk me through your dad saying that you would win the title. Was this before you had faced Witherspoon, or was this immediately after uh, you won the title? Your dad called you up and said, hey, you know, I had a dream that you were going to win it in a minute 30, and, and you beat that. Talk me through yeah. that. I talked to Aaron Witherspoon last year and asked him about that second fight that he had with you, and he said that that first fight really, really shook him, and it really affected him going to the second fight. Were you feeling good going to that one? Yeah, man, because I, I thought I won the first fight. I mean, just, you know, we had that knockout thing, so that basically made it no contest. But um, I just was confident, man. I'm always, I always, I never go into a fight. Thinking I'm gonna lose or think it's a possibility I can't lose. I always any fight, I don't care I'm fighting, I'm, I still I'm gonna win and I see and I visualize me winning some way or the other. Um, so my confidence always is, is you know, to succeed. You know, I love to succeed. I always strive hard and work hard to do that. And um, you know, it, I really want to shut up I just know I want to win and do whatever I had to do it, do whatever it takes to, to win, you know. Mm-hmm. And that win got you the King of the Cage welterweight title. How much did that belt mean to you? Oh, it meant a lot, man. It, it basically changed my world for a little bit. You know, uh, I had some good sponsor deals, and you know, uh, with uh, training and wise and going to different gyms and like that. You know, just had just gave me a good name in the sport. And uh, in my and, you know, I still work regardless of not having it or not having it. You know, I still you know have to work hard and. Uh, and basically, you know, I mean, trying to build my name, build my reputation up to be, you know, good one of these fighters that what we talked about for a while. You know, I'm not, never fought, I never like to fight any chumps, so I, I always like to, to be challenged and pushed. So, you know, I want, I want more of those. I, I want to win the UFC belt one day. I just, I'm just always trying to go hard and, and work hard and, and get, obtain my goals, you know. Mm-hmm. Is that your only title belt, or do you have others? And do you still have the belt, or when you lost to Mike Guyman, did you have to give it back? No, no, you, you, you keep it. It's a trophy. Mm-hmm. You, know, they, you know, of course, you don't want, you don't want the belt. I don't walk around with mm-hmm. parties and stuff like that. And sure. How do people wear it and stuff? But, uh, yeah, keep it as a trophy. And he's got a brand new shiny one that he had. Mm-hmm. And now to the fight against Mike Guyman. You fought him at King of the Cage Prowler on December 11th, 2008. Going into that fight, you don't have to get too into detail, but you were going through some personal issues. Um, you know, how much did that affect that fight? And uh, looking back on it now, do you regret taking that fight? Uh, I, don't, I don't have any regrets, man. Um, the personal issues I was going through, you know, uh, was a little tough time in my life, and it affected my training. I didn't train hard as much as so I fight. I really took uh, basically two weeks, maybe a week and a half to train for it, especially to cut some weight. So that part of it, you know, when it came down to round four, round five, you know, I was dead gas. Uh, but still far hard. And, you know, he caught me the fifth round. But, you know, I just know that it's, it's all life lesson, you know, things that, you know, that you have in your life that 
Mm -hmm. We'll get to that fight in just a second, but um, after that fight, that was your last time fighting for King of the Cage. What happened with them? Why did they never bring you back? Uh, I believe I moved. You know, I got to move up to a part of Show XC after that. Um, I believe my time, my contract was up. It's probably, it's, you know, I'm manager. He deals with a lot of those things and find me fights in different organizations. There was no sour moment with, with King of the Cage, like that. No bad meeting on a bad note. I think that's just, you know, I'm just moved up um, with a different organization. That's it. Well, after that, you went on a four-fight win streak. Then you fought Jay Haran at Bellator 35 in March of 2011. Talk to me about that fight, because that fight, leading up to it, you had said that winning that tournament, getting that $100,000 was going to change the fortunes of your family, and it was going to put you on the map worldwide in MMA. Uh, talk to me about how disappointing that fight was for you, considering the way it ended. Oh, very disappointing, man. Uh, it, it, you know, the, the it wasn't that long. I didn't get to showcase, you know, you know, a lot of times fights, you know, they, you know, fights take a little time to develop. It takes a little time to, you know, to fill the fighter out before, you know, you really get into the big balls and stuff like that, you know. I ended up throwing a kick and got taken down and he was on top of his little bit. No damage was being caused, but uh, he uh, had a, a, I don't even call it a submission, he had a headlock. And basically, uh, he mounted out that I was asleep and Rosenthal, he just came over and stopped the fight without even checking, you know, and that, it, that hurt a lot because, you know, it was my opportunity, not more than the money, but my opportunity to, to it was my opportunity to make more, you know, say, a little bit of game in the fight game. Um, but, you know, I, I can't keep drawing on that, but it basically it did hurt my, I think it, it, it did hurt me, you know, fight-wise. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just a it's misfortune. Mm. You know, and it's, it's, a, it's one of those things to where, you know, if fighters need to it, throw for fighting, we should need to keep our mouths closed when you're fighting. Mm. You don't need to see the talk to the ref, there's no need to say anything to them because, you know, you can throw them off and let them explain, you know, what they're saying, but, you know, you know, state is state, it is, it is what it is, you know. People just need to, if you want fighters to fight and let the refs do their job, you know. Mm -hmm. Is that the worst moment of your MMA career? What, the worst moment? Yeah. That was the most disappointing. Mm -hmm. Up until this point, what do you think the best moment of your career has been? Um, just, <laughs> just keep your winning record. Uh, I say throughout. I think it's, it's all been a good ride, man. You know, going to different places, different cities, and it's, it's, all been, it's all been a good moment for me, man. I, I, it's from coming from where I came from, you know, living a life with, you know, with really no direction and to find this and, you know, doing things I never thought I would even be doing or going places I ever thought I'd be doing, you know, it's all been one big ride, one big Mm -hmm. Now, Anthony, you mentioned your record. Some of the databases, some of the websites have your record at 19 and 6, some have it at 21 and 5, some have it at 22 and 5. You know, what exactly is your official record? My official record is 23 and 5. There's a couple of fights, so I don't know if they weren't sanctioned or not. And there's a fight that I fought down in Minnesota that's not even on. It's on certain sites, but it's not on all the sites. And the most accurate one I've seen is 22 and 5, mm -hmm. without the one that I, you know, that's probably not a fight. So, yeah, I've only lost five times first week, and if you really ask me, uh, I only lost two people, uh, legitimately, mm -hmm. which were um, Truth Ticket and my guy. And the other fights were, like I said, with Carl Prater, I think it was BS with the refs, I mean with the uh, fish, with the uh, judges. Um, of course, we've seen how Jay and Ron went, and then I fought John Mato and there's another ref mistake thing, too, so. Two-part question. First part, who's the toughest fighter you've ever faced? And second part, who's the best fighter you've ever faced? Um, they're all good fighters. And everybody that falls pretty good. It's the toughest, toughest fight. Um, if I, was, uh, I, I guess I'll say the one with the guy in that took, that was five rounds, that was a five-round war, man. Even, even though, you know, most excuses, but even though I, I wasn't trained all the way up and you didn't have that much cardio, I, I still fought all the rounds and, I was, I was really tough. I was, I was really spent on that one. And um, I can't say one, no fighter is a better fighter than the rest. They're all, they're all good fighters. They're all professional athletes. So mm -hmm. I say they're all great fighters when I fought. Mm -hmm. 
It's funny that you mentioned Mike Guyman as the toughest opponent that you fought because he said you were his toughest opponent when I talked to him back in the summertime. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. when somebody says that about you, uh, you know how how much of a compliment is that when someone says, "Hey, you're my f- toughest fight." You know how much of a compliment do you take that as? Um, you know, it, it makes you smile. It makes me give a little bit, you know, because uh, if someone's happy about that, you know, I'm I'm, I'm talking on that way. I'm not one of those fighters that people think that hey. I haven't seen one of your entrances in a long time. I remember back when you were in King of the Cage and seeing some of those fights you wore, this black mask. Are you still wearing that mask? And for the people who don't know the story behind it, you know, what is the story behind you wearing the mask? you get your nickname, The Recipe? Oh, I gave it to myself. <laughs> I, was, I had a pretty good record, and you know, people were looking, oh, you're going to be successful in fighting all the good fighters, I'll get nicknames, and, you know, I wanted a, a nickname that was different from everyone else, and uh, I liked to be different. I didn't want it ever used. I didn't want to become Boom Boom or Boom Boom, and I wanted to be a little bit different, you know, thousands of people got those nicknames in box and kick box and fight, but I just went with something that I, I thought fit in the name, and because uh, it's mixed martial arts, and I was going to go with the formula, but I, I thought that sounded kind of too many syllables or whatever. Um, I just went with the recipe. It's, it's, a, it's like a mixture of, you know, it's, it's everything I, I am. It's the, the kick, it's the fighting, it's the boxing, it's the wrestling, it's the, the, the mental part of it. It's, it's everything all mixed in me, and uh, that's, that's who I am. Mm-hmm. You only fought one time in 2012. It was against Tony Parker. That was your only fight. Um, I think that I fight Dan Head too. In twelve or eleven. October of two thousand eleven. Dan Head. Okay. Yeah. There. There was one fight. I guess. Um. That's basically, man. I was, you know, just trying to. I have went through a couple injuries. Um. My, I have like a back problem sometimes, and you know, from time to time, and broke some hands, broke my feet, my foot a couple of times. So it's just been knickknack injuries, and trying to heal up, man. And, and when I get a good opportunity, when I'm healed, I, I'll take a fight and then, you know, I try, I want to get back on that schedule where I'm fighting every other month, every two or three months, or like that, you know, but, um, I was all right, just trying to heal, just get my body right. Mm-hmm. You know, you were rumored to be on the Flawless Fighting Championships 2 card. I think that was in early December. You didn't fight on that card. What happened with them, or was this just a rumor and you never signed with them? Um, I, I was supposed to fight with them, but um, I get another injury, man. I, I just have a, I have a bad back problem, man. And, uh, just, I just got to get up. You know, fight also a big fight. But he was a, a pretty good, decent opponent. There was no way I took him to a fight, you know, pretty much 50%. Um, body wise, so it wasn't a good idea at the time. Mm-hmm. And now, some of the databases have you listed as a middleweight. Are you moving up to 185, or was this just because uh, the last fight against Tony Parker, I believe that was at 185, and they, they just carried that over? I think it's a little much I fought 85, I fought 70. Uh, there's, you know, those two weight classes are based on my weight classes. I don't, I'm mostly a 70 pounder, um, but, you know, I'll, I'll take a fight 85, but I don't care. I'm just trying to. I think I'm going to see the 85 as well, actually. Mm-hmm. So, any of those weight classes, I'll fight. Now, I'll fight anybody, I don't care. Mm-hmm. As long as I'm nice and healthy and ready to go, I'll, I'll get it in. Mm-hmm. You mentioned your goal is to be in the UFC and make a run at the title. You're 32 years old. You fought you know, a lot of tough guys. You've had a lot of fights. Do you think it's a possibility still to go there? Yeah, um, as long as, man... Because we, we can have a thing in writing as far as, you know, 
um, as, as far as it, once I get in that bed, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a good run. I mean, age is going to do it. It's all about the skill set. It's all about how hard you train. And, it, and it's all about your will, you know? And um, I'm not going to go there and be a, a pushover. I'm, I don't plan on going there. I don't want to lose it all anyway. But I just want a good run, you know what I'm saying? Make some good money and, and you know, probably retire or probably a good chance somewhere. Mm-hmm. Why do you think it hasn't happened yet? Because you, looking at your record, the only guys that you've lost to, uh, with the exception of John Manlow, have been UFC veterans. You know what has been the the holdup? Why haven't we seen you sign there? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Um, I've had opportunities to, to fight them before, younger in my career. Um, the timing wasn't right. They pulled up wasn't right. The money wasn't right. I guess. You know, it's 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 all it's all on board out to timing. I guess whatever time is right. It's gonna Well, the next time you're going to be in action, January 19th at Roctagon 23 against Jared Mearshart. How much do you know about this guy? Um, I just seen a couple uh, things on uh, on the computer about some fights. Uh, if you've heard any of my interviews or anything uh, before, I'm not one of those guys that uh, I go into a fight, you know, too worried about my opponent. I worry, you know, of course you have your, your, your worries, but I mean, I, I like to focus on what I'm going to bring to the cage, you know what I mean? I like to fight my fight. Um, I, don't like to, I don't like to train that fight around what he's going to do. I can, you know, be the one who's going to be, you know, predicting all the action and stuff like that because um, I just don't like to fight on my, I don't like to train out of my game. I like to get a good game plan for myself and I'm just going to go off there and do it, you know, and, uh, but, you know, I know he's good. I know he's good. Where are you training at now, and who are you training with in preparation for this fight? Um, I still got a lot of guys. I mean, I got my boxing coach, uh, Mark Lindbergh. I've been in Indianapolis, and, I, and I'm at the American Top Team um, here in Indianapolis, where we'll call those Diaz. Um, I know them on, they, 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 get, they get me ready for fights, they get my cardio, they get my, my skill sets ready, and, you know, we just we work our game plan, and we go out and fight, and we make it happen. Mm-hmm. Anthony, from what I understand, you're a video game addict. You're very big into video games. Uh, what are some of your favorite games you like to play? Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck on Medal of Honor. What about it right now? I can't stop playing that. Of course, I do my Madden. And I always issue all challenges, whether it wants some Madden or NBA 2K13 or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, I'm a PlayStation fanatic. I just play all kinds of games. I kill my sons and my kids are all in the games as well, so. Those are my basic ones. I'm, I, I love the Call of Duty series. I'm on, I'm on the battlefield and the, the Metal of Honor, so you guys can find me. Rescue 145 is my, my uh, PSN name. If anybody wants to check me out. Mm-hmm. Do you have any other hobbies besides playing video games when, when you're not training? Um, my kids. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just I'm a fan now. I can you know, hang out with my kids and with the family and stuff like that, man. With, with, my, with my girl and everybody. We just, just do our thing, you know. We're, I'm home. Training. I go to work. That's about it. Mm-hmm. Are you a full time fighter or do you have another job? Yeah, I have another job, um, but I like to, I'm a full time fighter as well, you know. I have a full time job too, so, but I've got to dedicate myself to both. You know, i got to keep hands and eating, you know, take care of the family, take care mm-hmm. of the households. Mm-hmm. And Anthony, last question. What's the goal for 2013? Is it just to be more active and get a lot of fights in, or is it, you know, get some fights in real quick and then make the jump to the UFC? You know, what exactly are you looking to do in this year? For my last 10 fights, I think I'm maybe 8 and or something like that, or 9 or something. Anyway, I feel that, you know, a few more fights, a few more tough fights, um, I should be cracking the UFC here by the end of the year or middle of the year or something like that, or... Something, you know what I mean? My, my goal basically is fighting more, winning more, and, you know, hopefully get that goal of fighting on the big stage and get some good money this year. That's, that's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. Anthony-
Anthony, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you would like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Um, I'd like to thank all my fans, anybody who supports me, who likes to watch me fight, you know, so thank you all, and uh, so I'd like to thank my family, my children, and everyone who supports me, and uh, my sponsors I have. This fight here coming up, and he's been there for a couple of fights. And intimidation clothing, um, them. I think my my my, to my trainers. You know, just all the guys who work with me, everyone in the gym, a couple of my buddies. And uh, you know, I just hope everyone has a good new year, a good year. Yeah. Anthony, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck January 19th at Roctagon 23 against Jared Mearshart. 